This dicebreaker video is sponsored by Wild Bills. Ditch the manufactured flavors. Your taste buds deserve better. Treat yourself to Wild Bills premium handcrafted soda pop. Mouthwatering beverages that allow you to escape to the most interesting places imaginable. Cheers to refusing the drink from the mainstream. Cheers to kick-ass canned. Cheers to being veteran owned and operated. At Wild Bills, flavor isn't everything. It's the only thing. Use discount code CHEERS15 for 15% off your first order. It's spooky season once again, and whilst last year we treated you to some horrifying board games to shudder under the sheets thinking about, this year we're mixing it up and suggesting some truly terrifying TTRPGs. We've got all sorts in this list, from big name movie tie-ins to award-winning indie darlings, and I've made sure that at least one of the games can be played solo, and another one can be played without a GM. So, strap in for some of the most sinister and blood-curdling role-playing you've ever done did. But before we start, I've mentioned a lot of horror-based RPGs on this channel before, but I always like to make sure that we're talking about some new games on every video. So, if you haven't played games like Thousand Year Old Vampire or Ten Candles, which is one of the greatest horror games of all time, then please do take the time to hit the subscribe button below this video so that you don't miss out on any of our recommendations again. You'll also notice that I've not mentioned Call of Cthulhu. I'm going to assume that everyone is aware of that because if you're not familiar, we've already got an interesting video on the channel all about Call of Cthulhu, talking about its popularity overseas. Now, enough distractions. Let's get into the first game on the list. Number one, Heart, the City Beneath. After winning about a million awards at this year's Emmys, which for the uninitiated is a relatively prestigious TTRPG award show, it seems silly not to at least mention Heart. And the best thing is, this game is absolutely deserving of all the praise it's gotten. Written by duo Christopher Taylor and Grant Howitt, most in the indie RPG scene will be familiar with the latter's work on his slew of one-page RPGs that have been releasing monthly for some time now, most notably the infamous game Honey Heist in which you are a criminal bear. But it turns out when the combined forces of Taylor and Howard put their cursed minds together, they can create some of the most harrowing and hauntingly beautiful worlds in all of tabletop gaming. Heart, the game we're recommending today, is a sort of sister game to a previous title by the name of Spire that seems to push home one of the most misunderstood aspects of Western fantasy, that is that high elves are all horrible racist bastards. Or at least most of them are in the city of Spire, a fantasy dystopia in which the living conditions are so bad for anyone not born high elf that some have escaped into the unknowable eldritch nightmare that is the city beneath, a red wet heaven that slumbers fitful under the city of Spire. And the further your damned adventuring party travels into its cloying, curse-ridden grasp, the more of themselves they're likely to lose on the way. Now, mechanically, this uses a pretty straightforward system in which you'll be collecting pools of d10s and determining the result of your actions based on whatever your highest result is. Your character has things they're good at and domains in which they thrive, and for each one that you have that's relevant, you'll add more dice to your pool. It's got a few nuances, like the multiple types of stress you can suffer, but in general it should be pretty easy for newer players to wrap their heads around, especially with an experienced GM at the helm. Outside of the obviously fantastic world building that the book has throughout, the thing that shines the most in this book is the cast of characters that you'll be able to create through some of the coolest character classes I have literally ever seen. The buzzing bee witch known as the deep apiarist, the body altering cleaver that takes the idiom you are what you eat disturbingly literally, the dead walker, a living corpse that walks between the planes of life and death and is followed around by a physical manifestation of their own demise that only they can see. The character classes in Heart are so fantastically specific, they do a lot of the job that most other games demand from you, for you. One of the hardest things about playing the game is picking just one class to be. All of these wonderful creations, as with the rest of the book as well, are gorgeously illustrated in stark and detailed imagery from the incredibly talented Felix Mayall. Reminiscent of Mike Mignola's Hellboy comics, the hard black shadows and sharp edges of this game's art are a perfect match for the tone of Heart's world building. Despite the standard fantasy backdrop that the world of Heart and Spire suspend themselves in, these games couldn't be any further from the standard fantasy fare. 
If you're looking for something truly different and wonderfully evocative, then the world of heart awaits you with open tentacles. If, however, you're looking for something a little more grounded in reality, then I might suggest our second game on the list. Number two, Vason. One of two games on this list, published by Free League, because Jesus Christ, they will not stop, Vason was produced by a big team of writers and illustrators because this right here is a big RPG book. If you're from the D&D school of RPG design with the opinion that your rulebook should be so dense with information that to ingest it all at once may lead to actual brain damage, then Vason is the book for you. And this isn't the Wizards of the Coast style of bookmaking where you have to own about four different tomes to have the base level of information needed to fully play the game. Everything that you could possibly need is included in this book. Character classes, in-depth rules, a star adventure, full creature profiles, randomization tables, info about the world, it's all in there. Based on the works of Swedish illustrator and author Johan Ergenskrans, Vason presents a dark gothic setting steeped in Nordic folklore and old myths of Scandinavia. In the 19th century, the world is undergoing great changes through industrialization and industry, and the old world that was is slipping through our fingers. As human greed begins to strip its natural surroundings of resources, the natural world begins to fight back. The Vason, ancient beasts of Nordic folklore, are understandably pissed off. Whilst the rural areas that sit amongst the fjords and forests of the north once knew the ways to appease these relatively neutral creatures, with the threat of extinction, the balance has been tipped, and you and your party must step in to help. Using mechanics adapted from the Year Zero engine, players and the GM will tell the story of a group of wily hunters and academics trying to learn about and deal with the Vason as they begin to terrorize small villages and towns. Standard weapons are useless against these supernatural foes. You'll have to learn how they tick and what's prompted their transgressions in the first place before you can really deal with them. Sometimes it's not about slaying a beast, but learning how to help or hinder them instead. If you're looking for something a little closer to home from your fantasy world, something grounded in real life folklore, then Vason is a perfect deep dive into the gods and monsters of the ancient Norse world. And the beautiful illustrations and long passages of lore about the world and its inhabitants go a long way to transport you into their universe, provided you've got the time to read it all. But if you're looking for something a bit more weird, then you should probably try our third game on the list. Number three, this person should not exist. This person should not exist is a solo artifact making game of self-described surveillance horror in which you will deface a Where's Wally book to tell the story of an ancient and unknowable cosmic entity known only as the man who should not exist. And I already know what you're going to be saying. Oh, wheels, this isn't a real RPG. There's no character classes or dice rolling. Well, tough. I've talked about the normal games, so now I get to bring up the weird ones that are amazing and different, and you're just gonna have to deal with it, all right? This Person Should Not Exist is a completely unique experience from anything I've seen in the strange and sultry tabletop category on itch.io. It's designed to be played by one person, one time, and gives you an incredibly cursed and fascinating keepsake to take with you once you're finished. The game takes place over 12 events in which the mysterious man who should not exist arrives at different locations to enact his strange and terrible plans, represented by the 12 spreads in every standard Where's Wally book, or Where's Waldo if you're from the US. Now, uh, quick note, um, if you are buying a Where's Wally book to play this game, try not to do what I did and accidentally order an absolutely tiny version, because apparently that's something that exists. <laughs> On each spread, you'll take a number of steps to try and catalogue the eventual cataclysm that this antagonist's mere presence is about to bring about, using photos and video stills captured moments before calamity. The first step is to identify the man himself and circle him with a black marker, writing a hopeful prayer around the circle in a probably misguided bid for safety from anyone who will listen. Then you'll have to locate the entities of power, the nine objects and allies that accompany this vile creature when disaster strikes, including the Library of Sin, a full record of every possible and actual act of evil, or Weeper, a creature that induces visions of tragedy and waits patiently for its master. 
With each three entities you find, you'll map lines between them to help triangulate persons of interest that you'll flesh out with sticky labels and prompts from the rulebook and the EOPs that surround them. Then finally comes your bleakest task, the kill signs. With every plane he touches, the man who should not exist will spread corruption, denoted by the familiar red and white stripes that spread throughout the maps. Anyone or anything touched by this corruption must be uh, dealt with. Cross their faces out with marker pen or draw squares around infected areas to note them. The rest of the team will handle what happens next. As you flick through the pages of the finished book, you'll see the story of a secretive organization doing everything in their power to stem the spread of an ancient evil and the horrors and pitfalls that they fell to along the way. It's as much of an experience just reading the book when you're done as it is making it through play, especially for someone who doesn't know what they've picked up when they see a cute little childhood picture book on your bookshelf. This Person Should Not Exist is a delightfully dark ritual of a game that has to be experienced to be believed and will leave you a fantastic artifact that can even be used in games to come that concern themselves with the mysterious and the occult. If you're a fan of things like the SCP Foundation and other internet creepypastas, this will definitely give you the right vibe for Halloween. But I'd also definitely recommend it for anyone who's looking to expand their definition of what it means to play a role-playing game. So, there's a game for all you solo players, but what about one for groups who can't decide on a GM? Well, here's our fourth game on the list. Number four, Sleep Away. A few of you may now be familiar with the works of Jade Dragon after the massive hit of pastoral animal fantasy that was Wonder Home. Well, before Wonder Home's nature hiking, wound healing world was brought to our tables, Jay released a game of summer camp horror and dangerous dreams that saw its players tangle with the trauma and terror of the otherworld force known only as the Lindworm. Inspired by Jay's own experience as a camp counsellor, the players will take on similar roles as they spend their summer looking after screaming kids and taking in the beautiful vistas of the American countryside in log cabins and crystal lakes. But lurking in the darkness behind the trees and in the dark and scarred corners of the players' minds lies an ominous and strange cryptid. As a shelter from the outside world, the camp offers refuge for those seeking to escape the pressures of modern day living, but it also fosters the old scars of those who have survived the creeping dread of the Lindworm. A terrible shapeshifter flaying the skins of its victims and inhabiting their forms, the Lindworm prowls at night searching for new blood. And people send their kids here? Based on the belonging outside belonging system, an amalgamation of Dream Apart and Dream Askew, and Powered by the Apocalypse ideas, in which players will be forgoing the rolling of dice to instead take and give tokens between themselves to use a set of moves from their character sheets. It's a system players of Wonder Home will be familiar with. You sort of receive tokens in exchange for hindering your character's plans and adding stakes to your story, and then you can spend those tokens on the reverse, achieving goals and doing something important for your character or the party. It's a system that tries to reinvent the ways in which we usually interact with RPG stories, Things we take for granted, like playing as a single person, or asking the GM what happens, aren't to be found here. You're a character, yes, but you can also take charge of aspects of the world. Locations, moods, NPCs, they're all up for grabs, and can be passed around as needed to truly tell a story together with your other players. If you love the mechanics of Wonder Home, but wanted something a little more haunting and personal in the subject matter, then Sleep Away is a great choice and even introduces some interesting hidden role mechanics to control the Lindworm that I think players of hidden role games like Among Us or Werewolf will really enjoy. But if you prefer much more traditional games with lengthy rule books and established settings, then boy, do I have a game for you in our final entry. Number five, Alien the Role Playing Game. Ridley Scott's Alien is one of the most influential horror films of all time, with its striking art style, masterful grasp of tension, and subtle use of world building. Alien set the precedent for horror stories for decades to come. Released in 2019, Alien the Role Playing Game is primarily inspired by the original 1979 film. With a slow burn approach to tension, favoured over highly intense action sequences. Even if you're familiar with the film, Alien the RPG still provides a whole host of exciting tricks to build an effective horror atmosphere and immerse players in a world of claustrophobic corridors and shadowy engineering bays. Players can choose from a number of different roles, including greasers, pilots, and corporate representatives, 
with each one having some amount of expertise in a certain area. However, none of the roles are particularly strong in their own right, and characters will be vulnerable when faced with any threats, especially those of the Xenomorph kind. Whenever a character witnesses a traumatic event, say the death of a crewmate by a chestburster, pretty traumatic, they'll start to take stress dice into their regular dice pool. And this is one of my favorite RPG iterations of stress that I've seen so far. Standard challenges use pools of d6s to determine success and failure, with more dice giving you better chances of getting what you need. When you take stress, you add extra dice to your pool in a different color for every subsequent challenge. So the more stressed you are, the higher your performance as your fight or flight starts to kick in and you enter a fragile state of clarity. But if you roll a one on any of the stress dice that you rolled as part of your action, you'll enter a state of panic, which causes you to roll against the table with your stress dice to see how badly that panic affects you. Roll low and you'll be okay, but rolling too high risks your character gaining a permanent status effect as well. These effects range from mildly annoying to genuinely life-threatening and do wonders to enforce the harshness of the alien universe. And in general, this game is a great adaption for those that are absolutely enamored with this janky corporate dystopia full of cosmic horrors and the most terrifying thing of all, a severe lack of human rights. For those of you that, for some reason, prefer the action bombast that the series became when they pluralized the title of Alien sequel, there are plenty of ways to play in that style, including some extra materials that you can purchase for a more colonial marine style of play. Either way, I was pleasantly surprised by how mechanically thoughtful this movie series adaption is made by Free League, especially after seeing how dense the book is. If you're one for chunky rule sets that have some diamonds of design hidden deep in their depths, I think you'll have a great time with the Alien RPG. And for those fans of the franchise out there with enough RPG chops to tackle the rule set, I mean, it's likely a no-brainer. So, there you have it, five absolutely dread-inspiring horror RPGs for you to pick up for Halloween this year, whether you're alone in the dark or together with friends in costume. To get even more tabletop game suggestions, make sure that you press the spooky subscribe button and maybe even like the video and click the bell to get notified when we put new videos live. Take a look at the links popping up on screen to also check out more of our videos as well as our website dicebreaker.com. I'll see you on the next video, but until then, have a spooky day! <laughs>